that we can yeah. go live. Let's do it. Okay, super. So uh, welcome everyone to our podcast series. Um, today we have uh, one of my uh, students who went to uh, NYU and her story uh, is amazing and I'm sure everyone will enjoy knowing about her. So Roshi, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and then we'll take it from there. Sure. Thank you, Arjun. Uh, and thank you for having me uh, join this series. Um, so I went to school in Gurgaon. I went to DPS Gurgaon. And then I uh, wanted to apply for colleges in the US. That's how I met Arjun and the Ed Brand team. I uh, had to, it was a tough choice between uh, Boston University and NYU. And I remember Arjun telling me the pros and cons, how NYU is not a real campus. But now that I look back, I think it's the best thing that happened to me. Yeah, um, sure. I majored in economics with a minor in business studies from Stern, and then another minor in business in entertainment, media, and technology, which is a cross-school minor between the film school, the media school, and Stern school. Super. Yeah. So, you know, typically when students go to college, uh, they have some expectations of what life will be like that. And then you start making choices once you're there and settling in can be uh, interesting, daunting at times. So what were early days at NYU like for you? If you remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's still clear in my memory. I'm not that old yet. But uh, so I think, I don't know if this is good or bad, but unlike other students or like kids going abroad, I had low expectations or none. I was, I went with a really broad mind that, okay, we'll see what comes through my way. And so uh, it can be good and bad. I don't know. But I think I made the best of it because uh, and because how the nature of the city is, your campus is all of New York City. So it took me some time to adjust. It's an expansive space. It's not the typical walls and, you know, a gated community, a gated campus. It's, it's huge. So it's overwhelming in the beginning uh, where you are confused about where all to go, what all to see, who all to talk to. And that's typical of anybody going into college in freshman year. So some decisions I think I made was never saying no in the first uh, month to events and social events, cultural events, boring events. I don't know. Uh, but I went through all of them and that's when I actually met my friends but who I stuck with throughout like four years of college. Um, also met some great professors. One of them turned out to be a great mentor for me later. And so all of those, I think, were key in helping me adjust, adapt really quickly in a city which is so fast paced and really moving. You have to catch up with the speed. Otherwise, you know, you kind of you kind of lag behind. And so that's why they say it's not for everyone. It's about the kind of pace you want to choose. But uh, you can choose it in college. The good news is that you're still in college. You don't have to, you know, do what everyone's doing. But uh, it's good to go interact, meet people engage and be proactive in the first few months. That's super. And of course, you chose interesting majors and even concentrations. Uh, was it something that flew naturally from what you were doing in high school and you'd gone decided or all the things that you unfurled while you were at uh, university? Hmm. That's a good question, because now that it's making me think whether I had that inclination in school towards these subjects like media and technology and entertainment that's a no <laughs> because <laughs> I think uh, my school didn't offer me enough to give me exposure to those but I feel like there was of course this interest to explore those and uh, because I went into global liberal studies program for the first two years uh, it was a great start for me where you know first two years I was doing all those mandatory courses in cultural, social foundations, literally foundations. But then later, there were these additional credits you get to choose uh, which concentration you want based on which major you want to pursue. So I think those extra credits uh, helped me, you know, go sit in classes, which I had never imagined I would. I was attending a, a film media production class. I was attending uh, a psychology class and global history class. So it was... It was all over the place, but I loved it. And that's why I was like, okay, I will uh, study econ, but I do want to, you know, explore uh, 
these different things and angles, which I attended classes in. So why not take a minor in it? So that's why I chose them. Mm, great. And so you think that the Global Liberal Studies program was uh, kind of a, in a way, a gift it turned out to be and you didn't know. A blessing in this guys. Yeah. 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 Super. No, it depends though. Some, I think some students are very sure of what they want to do and you know, what kind of concentration they want. But if you know, you have even the slightest of benefit of doubt, you should go ahead with something like that because there's so much flexibility involved and no one's judging you for changing majors or minors or decisions. Uh, and so that's what you're supposed to do in those two years, explore, find out what you want to do. Right. So it's somehow sort of connected to the job that you're doing. So tell us more about Capgemini and your role in it, in the organization in the last one and a half years since you graduated. Sure. So they are a leader in providing IT services. And um, I also worked in the digital services department where I am working as an organizational change management specialist, where we help organizations digitally accelerate to adopt to these new technologies coming in that we have especially seen in the last two months, how digital acceleration has taken place. Um, and we help them adopt to changes essentially we manage people, we manage stakeholders, and we essentially manage the IT and business side of people. We can try to connect them and then see basically if a successful implementation can take place from there. Great. So uh, how, did, how do you think your studying what you did at NYU helped you sort of get through the interview stage at Capgemini and why this job seemed to be a good fit? Yeah. So I think NYU does a great job a, because of how it's located, it's in the middle of, you know, the city where all kind of job opportunities lie at your doorstep. So they also have great partnerships with many of these firms. And uh, my major, you know, helped me uh, not be limited to industries. So because econ is so widely accepted in different industries like technology, IT, and banking, accounting, marketing, branding, you know, all of those were right there. So. I never had an issue with having access to those. Um, and then how this role really helped me or like how I'm a good fit, you know, coming from my background was I was very early on. I was in school councils when I joined NYU. I was in all of these clubs and I was looking for something with that had a touch of, you know, companies that are doing technologically advanced things, helping mm -hmm. companies, you know, adopt to the, the newer di di uh, technologies. So I was always, you know, networking from, with them initially. And this was just an extension of that role that I was playing in college. So it was great, but now I'm getting paid for it. So <laughs> worked out well. <laughs> That's great. And like you mentioned, the world has gone digital at a hyper speed yeah. in the last two months or so. So what do you think is the post COVID world going to look like in your industry and also in higher education? We'll come to that, but yeah, in your industry, what do you think is going to accelerate? So I feel like I'm already in an industry that works with a lot of technology. It's basically, it relies on technology. It's the bread and butter. So uh, for us, remote learning uh, or remote uh, meetings and remote operations are, are not a new thing. Uh, so we were quickly able to uh, adopt, but we were on the forefront of helping our clients adopt, which is where we saw the challenges the most, where we are telling them, okay, the business is going to be the same, except it's going to be remote, giving them the confidence, building those relationships. I think that has gained more importance now, you know, letting them know, okay, it's fine, uh, building tutorials on how to use simple things like Zoom, MS Teams. Skype, all of those, you know, a lot of uh, privacy settings come in place, letting the client know, okay, it is safe to, to function and be with us, partner with us online where you can see us. But uh, because our brand is so established, you know, there's already that advantage that we had that we didn't have to do the work from scratch. But, um, you know, with COVID, I think post COVID, whenever that's going to happen, I think the biggest learning has been that meetings can be done remotely. You don't need to meet a person in like we're doing uh, it now. <laughs> exactly. It's possible to do everything remotely, not everything, but especially meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think I see meetings going remote permanently. 
Great. Yeah, I think um, well said. I think the world, especially the second part of the question I wanted to focus on was even education. We see it like we meet our students online and it's way easier and it's very productive for me to do many more meetings. And even the idea of connecting with alumni and doing these interviews yeah. uh, well, was possible because I had more yeah. free mind space instead of figuring out, you know, get yeah. dressed, go to work, <laughs> meet five people, come back. Uh, so it takes yeah, time for sure. Definitely, definitely. But what do you think of higher ed? Because you've been at a school which is fairly fast paced and it's got global campuses, it's got a huge commitment to international students. How do you see things changing uh, for NYU in particular and then in general for higher ed? So, you mean uh, for like in colleges? Yeah, uh, so what post- do you think colleges? could do to deal with uh, all the changes because many campuses will not have a full enrollment a full class uh, this year my recommendation would be to hire me to help them (laughs) adopt (laughs) to these digital technologies and so in in a way you want to earn earn what you paid and why (laughs) you of course i want to get my return you know on my investment but no i think uh, if i were to be someone who is uh, going to college and I don't know if things are uncertain right now, classes might go online. Uh, I would say that it's still possible. You're still learning the same uh, in terms of the coursework, but I think colleges need to be more proactive in engaging with the students where they are taking an extra step towards, you know, talking to them. It's not the students who want to set up office hours with them. It's the professors who are putting in more time and, you know, effort in asking them if they, if they want to discuss something, if they want to discuss about some different classes that they can take, you know, just, I think it's about engaging more because now you are remote, you're doing everything online. It's all about FaceTime and it's all about just talking more. I think that's going to help, uh, give more confidence to the students, um, mm-hmm. that, okay, you know, I am on the right track. So what do you think are industry best practices? You mentioned, you know, people are meeting online, communicating a lot more. Do you think universities uh, can learn from what corporations and consulting companies are already good at? Definitely. I think Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I think consulting will play a huge role because uh, privacy is a huge concern, not only when everything is going uh, remote. I remember when I was in NYU, uh, hacking systems getting hacked. It wasn't a normal thing, of course, but it would happen once in a blue moon and it was still a concern. So I can't imagine why this would be any less important now. All the intruder stories that you hear of at Zoom. Luckily, we just shared the meeting ID a few minutes ago, so I hope no intruders jumps in, but yeah. of course, there are, there's learning for everyone. There are kids in kindergarten in India who have Zoom classes now. My daughter's I know. <laughs> I never knew about Microsoft Teams and all yeah. of that until I started my job. And right. my sister tells me, who is 16, that, okay, we have all of these things. You know how to set this up. And I was like, wow, she <laughs> exactly. is way ahead in the game now. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll switch gears. More about you and your learning and your own understanding of your strengths. Um, what do you think you discovered your strengths to be? over a period of five, six years since you graduated from high school. (laughs) Yeah, no, a lot. (laughs) But uh, I think a lot of factors helped me. Like, it wasn't just a moment that I woke up and I knew, oh, I am strong and independent. And I think it was a journey where every day was a learning. Every day, you know, you're making mistakes. You're falling, getting up, and you know you're realizing, okay, this is something I am good at, and this is something I'm not good at. So, I think for me, uh, my natural inclination was being around people, being in clubs, uh, always attending these meetings, organizing these events, and being a part of the community, being really proactive. That's when I learned, you know, I have this friendly nature, and I like to engage with people, whether it's just professors, my classmates or people I'm working with on organizing these huge events we were managing budgets so you know we were already doing so much it was I like to be a part of the communities I I think uh, that's something I explored but I also found out that I I am in nature like really proactive which really helped me 
you know, always be prepared for my classes, for my, for recruiting, for uh, even rejections, because, you know, you are, if you are prepared and proactive, you know, you know, there's a possibility of rejection. So um, I think that's something good I explored about myself. Uh, initially, you know, I was so uh, overwhelmed by the, the crowd in New York City. And, you know, I was imagining it to be your campus for the next four years it can be daunting at times you know because there's so much going on it's not just you going getting up going to class coming back there's a lot happening in between like i remember in my first year uh i uh, saw this homeless man and i'm not nothing against mm-hmm. them but you know you don't get to see that in uh, we live in protected environments uh, back home in india and how to pass through that you know block uh, while him being there right, right. was a completely different challenge. And, you know, that's when I realized that I crossed it successfully and I was, he was, he was drunk and he was, I don't know, uh, to- intoxicated. So I don't know. Uh, I was worried and scared, but I, I crossed it and I, I was like, pat on my back. I am strong. I can do this. And that's, I think when I started going on these really long walks uh, and I was like, okay, Greenwich Village and NYU campus is not the only place I should be. That's mm-hmm. uh, when I started going Exploring on these long walks. Other up, down, down, yeah. down. Exactly. Okay, super. And I was like, there's more to college than just, you know, this. <laughs> right, right, right. Of course, uh, New York City uh, is uh, going through a lot now. And you mentioned that you also had to move out from Brooklyn. Um, yeah, I hope things turn better soon enough. Yeah. But again, talking more about things that uh, yeah i mean maybe talking more about what you did with us in terms of ed brand uh, yeah. what would you think uh, worked for you while working with our team or anything that you have to say uh, as to what you feel mentoring high school students can be like and what yeah. could we do better i think i was really thankful for all the brainstorming sessions that we had together initially and it wasn't just okay you know uh, what did you do in in school and extracurricular and let's just write a college application on it i think i liked the special attention on like really diving deep into interests and just me overall and uh, i never got the opportunity to do that in school so it was new it was interesting and it was all about me. So I loved it. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. but no, I think that was a great platform where I learned, you know, that because this continued through college where I was with my counselor, where I was with my mentors and we were doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, what I, what I started with the Ed Brand team, I think it was a great learning from, for, for me, from the team yeah. uh, that I was able to use uh, later on in college when I was interacting with the counselors and the mentors. Yeah, so you're pretty kind to <laughs> have said all that, but it's great. I think we keep talking about how uh, students should uh, figure out how coaching and mentoring works and the interactions help students once they get to meet their advisors in college. It's that relationship building skill set that you carry forward. Uh, which will be useful. So that's great. I'm, I'm happy that uh, uh, yeah. you have a similar feeling about what we feel we should be doing, right? Absolutely. Okay, super. I think one last question uh, about advice you would give uh, students who are supposed to go to college in August. And mm-hmm. it's a interesting year for even students who are graduating in 2020 and students who are going to college in 2020. Yeah. But more to you know, what advice would you give them? Because there's so so many, so much uncertainty. I know they will get to campus sometime, but we don't know whether they'll be there in August. Uh, what is some advice you would give them? How, how should they spend their time if uh, campuses do not open or if classes are online? Uh, is it worth the wait or should they change their plans? <laughs> because uh, they worked hard to get in and now the parents and their parents are thinking maybe, you know, they should apply to colleges in India. Any, um, any words of wisdom? <laughs> yeah, personally, I would not take that route if you have been admitted to a college and if you're thinking about changing a decision to switching to applying to colleges in India, uh, simply because of it cannot, it does not match the global exposure, the, the great quality of the faculty that is here. 
there's a reason that the reputation is what it is. Um, in terms of, you know, come, going to college in August, if there is un there's so much uncertainty, maybe try to uh, go to college in spring semester and not in the fall. You know, that's one option that you can follow. Sure. But uh, I would just kickstart now without wasting any time. You know, if I were you, uh, if I were them, I would make the most of it because I think one semester is not going to change the course of the four years that you will be paying for and you will be in college for. Uh, there will be many more opportunities to actively engage with the faculty, with the students you meet on campus when you get there. So this one semester, which is three months, which in my head used to be a long time when I was in college, but it isn't uh, in the real world. So um, it'll be quick, make the most of it, you know, engage, talk to students, talk to them, make these group chats, you can video call, you can still continue to do all of those things and actually perform you will perform better when you are doing remote learning because there'll be less distractions. You know, uh, the freshman year, freshman year, you meet so many new students. There's so much new stuff happening. You're still uh, getting used to it. So I think you'll get a kick start if you do the remote learning way because, you know, academically you can get used to it at your own pace. And then, you know, when you're ready, you're on campus and it'll be all great. You have already connected with people. It won't be the awkward way of meeting people where you're in, sitting in meetings and clubs. So you can disconnect them online uh, with them online and meet them in, in person when you get the opportunity to be on campus. Super. I think humans learn to adapt and maybe those 21 day, the 21 day rule should apply. Like if they, you know, students do things online for 21 days, they'll form a habit. Uh, yeah. So yeah, great. I, so yeah, I mean, is there anything related to that? What have you discovered about yourself during this kind of shelter in place situation? I am actually being more fit. Like I'm trying to work out all these home workouts more than I usually would because like you said, you save time. You don't have to get up, get dressed, go to meetings. And my job was really demanding because I had to travel Monday through Thursday. So I would get, I would catch flights on Monday, come back Thursday and it would take a toll on my me mentally and physically. So now I'm getting a lot of time to myself to just, you know, not have Sunday scaries okay. <laughs> and uh, take it easy, you know, take it at my own pace, give myself enough time for working out, enough sleep, okay. getting enough rest. But I don't, that being said, I don't want this to continue. <laughs> I would like to go back to my busy life. <laughs> yeah. And about work though, you know, very often, uh, uh, students and parents are concerned that if you're not a STEM major, there is no way you're going to get a job. And here we are, we're talking to you, you have a full-time job, you've completed a year and a half or so. How does, uh, how does that fear which parents and students have that, you know, is it worth spending so much money studying abroad? And uh, what is the ground reality in your perspective? So I, uh, you know, when I went to college, I, uh, during my uh, sophomore years, when my um, major ch converted to STEM, okay. and to my surprise, I was like, okay, wow. <laughs> media and Wait. technology. <laughs> okay. I, I wasn't expecting it. No, they, they converted econometrics to, okay. they, it falls so, under STEM yeah, so now. math, a lot of math. Yeah, exactly. And so I was like, okay, uh, what does that mean? And I, ex I found that, you know, during college. So... <clears throat> but <clears throat> even when I did not, you know, it's, I don't think uh, the perspective for me ever was that if I'm going to college and if I don't get, get a job, the college wasn't worth it. It's something that sticks with you. It, mm -hmm. it shapes you and you carry it with you wherever you go, whether you're working in India, in a different country or in the US. Uh, it's not something that you get rid of. And I wouldn't, I never measured my college degree to what job I'm getting, if I'm getting one or not at all. A lot of people, a lot of uh, friends I know had to go back because they did not get a job. And you know, you have like a three months time frame where you have to return if you can't find a job. It's all very daunting. But again, there are things that are under, there were things under my control, which were recruiting, being proactive, networking, preparing for interviews, preparing my resume doing well, you know, academically and doing extracurriculars. It's a lot, I know, but it's, uh, it's an extension of school, but you're on your own and there's very little handholding. So 
uh, that's the only key difference. But there are things which are not in their control, like the economy. And there will be a hundred candidates <laughs> applying for the position you want, and they will be equally good. They would have done all the things you have, would have done. It's a lot. It's a lot about sheer luck. You know, people you are looking for. What are they looking for? And sometimes it's not the right fit for you. So if if there's a rejection coming in, yeah. that's what I learned. That sometimes uh, it's not just because they didn't like you. Maybe you were not the right person to work for, with them. So there's always you know to think about it. But uh, I don't think this uncertainty should uh, should influ- be influencing these decisions about going to college. Super. Yeah, great. It's so much. Uh, yeah, so much of a sort of pleasure to be uh, interviewing you today. And so thank you for your <laughs> yeah. time. And I hope to. Uh, continue more conversations in the future and also connecting our current yeah. students. And whoever's going to NYU, right. I would like to yeah. say. So yes, we have uh, go three, ahead. Kids, three kids <laughs> coming your way soon. <laughs> don't, you, don't even think. Like, I think it's the best thing that happened to me. And not everybody gets to say that you went to college in the greatest city in the world. So yep. I wouldn't. Be too much I wouldn't that. That. <laughs> Super. Thank you, Rashi. I'm going to yeah. uh, sign off now. But uh, Thank you. It's uh, like I said, it's just, uh, it's just a joy to have reconnected during these difficult times for everyone. Well, difficult in a way that it's the uncertainty makes it difficult, but we are privileged to have a happy and, you know, family and people surrounding us, everyone's safe. But yes, our thoughts are out there for the world and our students are trying to do many more things um, uniquely even you know volunteering online and uh, doing projects with us which are really useful to find uh, uh, ways to make a difference so uh, yeah it's just uh, knowing that a student who we worked with has now been able to learn so many new things about Mm -hmm. herself and be successful in whatever you do so all the best for the future and uh, thank you bye (laughs)